Okay, so I'm going to show you today with Harvey a little bit how we're working on the half steps. And I've worked with him, you know, maybe once or twice a week for a few months now. So again, I have a carbon fiber rod, which I like, especially with a sensitive horse, because it doesn't bite as much as a whip that has like a uh, end to it. It has a little bit of a softer, duller tone to it. So I always start with the leg lifting. And with the leg lifting, I start, I stroke them starting on the hip, slide the, the stick down to the hock area, or sometimes lower onto the cannon bone area, give him a little tap. And what I want is that, that he lifts, lifts his leg, brings it forward under his body, and holds it. And I want him to hold it up until I take the stick away. Oh boy. And this, you know, when you're teaching the half steps, this leg lifting stuff is like really tedious, but it's really important. So slide down, touch him on the hock. He lifts that leg, I release. Slide down, touch him on the hock, lift. Come on, a little higher. So if I want him higher, I'm touching, tap, 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 and then release. And then same thing with the right hind. And you can see like he knows that I want, I'm gonna want the opposite leg. So he starts shifting too fast. So with him, I want him to really wait for me. So right hind leg, good. Release, wait. Now left hind leg, release. Now right hind leg, boy. And the reason that, like the reason it's so important that they lift and hold that leg instead of just like, like sometimes I'll lift it up and then put it back down and then slam it down, is that in the end, you know, you don't want to pee off this like this. You want to pee off that's, you know, like this, where they're really jumping and holding the weight on one leg at a time. So that's why when you're doing this leg lifting, you want to be able to touch, they hold that leg up and then release. And it's also important for when you're riding them that when you tap them with a whip and you're riding them that they think to lift and hold their leg rather than to slam their leg back down into the dirt so left hind leg let me get them a little straighter here oh boy so left right and then you can also add a little cluck. So when he's lifting, cluck. But until your horse is lifting their hind legs that well, you really aren't ready to start with the pee off. You know, you wanna spend a few weeks of just getting the leg lifting. So then when I'm ready for the half steps, I have my reins over his neck. And again, I take a little contact. I get a little behind his shoulder because I want him stepping forward. So I ask him to walk forward here. Good. And to start with, if he just gives me a few steps, Good. Just like when he finds that rhythm of a little trot step. And when he kicks out, I just ignore it. Boy. Good. Boy. So, and then I try to do this on both sides. So I'll turn around and go to the right. Although I'm definitely not as coordinated this way. And he gets a little more worried on this side. So again, I'm just gonna halt here for a minute. Oh, and just reassure him. You don't want your horse to be doing any of this out of fear. You want them to stay relaxed when they're doing it. Oh boy. So then I'm gonna ask him to walk forward. So first, I'm just gonna get a nice collected walk. No. 
walking. Good. Walking. Good. Good. Those last few steps were really good. So I'm kind of with him working on doing collected walk, like collected walk, a couple half steps, collected walk, a couple half steps. Since he's young, I'm not expecting, and he's still learning, I'm not expecting like 15 piaf steps like you need in the Grand Prix. But if he tries, if he gives me a couple piaf steps, then I let him out of it. Good. And you can see now he's getting a little more bounce. Good. And it's really important, the reward. You know, horses learn by the reward. So if there's, if you put the pressure on, you have to release it. You have to release it at the right time. You have to release it when they do the right thing. So if he gets a few nice steps, I'm gonna release it and really kind of pet on him. Especially with him, he gets, he gets nervous. He's kind of an overachiever. So he needs lots of reassurance that he's done the right thing. Good boy. And like at those first few steps were a little uncoordinated. So I just waited until he got a couple rhythmic trot steps and then rewarded him again. Walking forward. And if he kicks out, I don't mind because he's just a sensitive horse. Now I'm saying, come a little more forward. Come. Good. So at first too, I'd, I'd rather have the, um, the half steps traveling forward. And then once they're good, I can put them a little more on the spot. Same thing when you're, when you're training them under saddle. So I'll go back to the right again. And he definitely, he's different to work in hand on the right and the left. On the right, he doesn't travel as much forward and he seems a little more nervous with me on this side. And I'm also not as coordinated. So I'm gonna just start saying, come on, can we just walk? Collected walk, not too fast. There, easy. Good. And walking straight. Come. Good. Oh, boy. Go one more time to the left and ask for a little more this time. Good. Good. And you saw how there, when I challenged him for more, he got a little bit upset for a moment. He kind of kicked out, but then he gave me some really nice work. So that's kind of like in training sometimes you have your comfort zone and then you have your stretch zone. So sometimes you have to push them a little in that stretch zone and ask for more. Um, and then 
go back to your comfort zone. But if you never get out of your comfort zone, if you never get out of where they're comfortable, they're never gonna do more. So it's just important that you don't live in the stretch zone. You know, you want, cause you want your horses comfortable, you want your horses relaxed. So you don't wanna be pressuring them super hard all the time, but sometimes you gotta go there a little so they try harder for you. So this is kind of, you know, what I, when I work him in hand, what I do with him, I don't pressure him a lot, but just that he a little bit gets the idea of the half steps. Um, because in the Grand Prix, you know, the Piaf Passage is 33% of your score. So you don't want to wait until you're doing the Pre-St. George before you start working on the Piaf. You're a good boy. Mm -hmm.